Hi, I'm Tim Smalley. Um, I run the uh, Tech Questions Today Go Sport Media Top uh, and Parfait. Um, so basically, for this, it talks about uh, the question is about with Grand Slam tennis and the fact that men play best of five and play best of three. However, they get paid the same, um, and it's to critically examine the paid sport against is the debate of equal pay principally about time on court. How significant also is the effect of roles of male and female players against tennis to attract crowd sponsors and the media game make points? Okay, so equal prize money for women has been, for women in grand slam tennis, is a topic that continues to cause debate, despite the fact that it has been seven years since Wimbledon became the last of the grand slams to operate equal prize money. Uh, in the last 50 years, women in the sport have grasped new opportunities to form new organisations which have helped to promote women's sport and to raise it to greater heights than ever before. Uh, however, that being said, there are still many factors that lead to arguments over equal pay in the Grand Slam tennis. Uh, the first of which is the argument of structural difference. So, men's tennis is so the men's Grand Slam tennis is structured as a best of five sets, whereas the women's is structured as a best of three. Now, the problem with that is it leads to the argument that men should be paid more for their wins in Grand Slam tennis due to the fact that they they're playing more. So, an, an example of this in everyday life is if you have two people in the same job, same gender, same age, and in the one day one of them worked eight hours and the other worked four, you would obviously expect the one who worked the eight hours to be paid more. Now, that being said, it's hard to say that women don't deserve to be paid the same amount because they're not given the option to play the five sets. Um, women, are, women, are, sorry, women tennis, female tennis players have often stated that they'd be happy to play the five sets if they met being paid at an equal level. Um, the problem with that is due to scheduling, it is almost impossible for both both sets to, so both um, genders to play at the same amount. So because it's only two weeks, you can only have the men play five, constantly play five sets, and the women. Three. So the answer to that could be very simple. Um, they could either split it up, so the men, so both play three at the start, and then as you approach the final, both play five, meaning that the games at the start go by quicker, they go, they're not rushed, or you can do the men to play five, and then the whole way through, and then women start off slowly with the threes, and then go to five as the finals progress. Um, however, another alternative is have one year where the men get to play the five sets and then the next the women. So it's one of those situations where it's not a difficult thing to fix, however it might not due to traditions and things like that. And the idea that men should be paid more due to the fact that family sets for women, because um, a lot of people could claim that because men are playing on the court more, they should get paid because people are coming to pay to watch them. That being said though, it's hard to argue because most people are paying just to go and watch, the ten watch it live. So for instance, when you go to the Grand Slam Tennis, if you purchase a ticket, it gives you access to both the men's and the women's. So you can't say that the men are the, the draw because you'll be going to both. If you bought a ticket, the odds are you'd go to both because you're there to watch the live tennis. It, shouldn't, it doesn't matter how short it is, how long it is. Because that's like saying that women don't play the same amount as men, but when you watch Roger Federer, or, sorry, no, like Joker, you go out and play a low C and pattern them within three sets. So technically it's the same amount that the women play. That being said, that can work for women because you can go out and pattern a low C as well. There is also the argument due to the Equal Pay Act 1970 which gives an individual the right to the same contractual pay. This has led to the claim that women are receiving more per men per hour. Now that being said, that is kind of true due to the fact that over the course of a year, women do tend, on average, to earn more per title win than men. Um, I'll leave that for now, I'll come back to it a bit later. As just it's all on the board behind me, so I'll come back to that later. Um, and that comes from the Equal Prize and Wages Equal Pay article. Uh, so next I'm going to go into the current pay scale. Uh, in 1968, Wimbledon's first year of pro tennis, the men's winner received £2,000. 
This effectively tripled the women's uh, women earned, which is seven hundred pounds. So there's a massive gulf in the amount earned between the two. Now, when we fast forward to 2015, the winners for the men's tennis earned 1.88 million pounds, as did the women for the females. So it's obviously equaled out a lot. Um, they're being offered the same pay. Again, that's one of the arguments the Christensen sets, which there isn't much that can be done apart from change. Um, so, in fact, however, having said, on average, women tend to be paid more per game, as I stated. Um, I'll, I'll, again, I'll come back to that. Um, but that, so, so women get paid more per average. However, as a whole, the financial system of tennis is actually skewed towards the men. So, that includes the TV deals, the sponsorships, and yeah, so the TV and the sponsorships outweigh the amount per, that is earned per um, match. So, for, so first I'm going to start looking at the salaries here. And the difference in the women's that are, uh, have been earned so far this year. So to start things off, I'm going to start with Serena Williams. In 2015, she's had five wins in the tour, which, and she's won a total of 11.6 million. So we're just going to... Yep. And then, and that's an average of 3.2 million per title. Obviously, I'm going to stand by now. These, these are the top three in terms of winnings made for the season, and it's also a very rough draft. Obviously, it doesn't include like second. I'm, I'm basing it on the average per win and the average of amount. Not so. This include this does include the amount that has been earned per seconds and thirds and other high placings. That being said, it's the rough draft, it's one of the best ways to kind of get a grasp of how much they're earning per title win. So we're going to start off with the story. So the left business moon made five wins, and that's at an average of 3.2 million per title. The next is the women's Maria Sharapova, 6.7 million made for the year, two, two wins, average of 3.25 per win. And the final one is Karen Wojnacki, 3.6 million, one win, and a 3.6 million average. So obviously that's all women done, and around that it's about three point, I'd say four million average for everyone. Now next we're going to look at um, the men. So we're going to start from Novak Djokovic, who's the men's number one in terms of amount made from winnings this year. Um, he's made a uh, seventeen point two million, and he's won seven titles. That's come at an average of two point four six million per major title per title he's won. Um, next, we're going to go down to Roger Federer. He's made nine million from five wins, at an average of one point eight million. And then Rafael Nadal, who has won four point five million from three tournaments, so with three wins, at an average of one point five million. Now, obviously, as I said before, that's a very, very rough um, kind of understanding. It's one of the easiest ways you can do it. It's Grasp. So the big difference is there's about two million difference per title win. Now obviously that's an, that can vary. It might it can be very skewed. So to take your pinch of salt because obviously it can move about due to the, depending on how much they each tournament was offering. So as we saw, Wimbledon was offering 1.88 million and other tournaments were offering more or less than that. Um, so then, however, next time we're going to go on something that's a bit more set in stone. It's not as rough, it's not rough, it's hard to argue. And that is the uh, sponsors and endorsement line. So we're going to start with the men's number one here for endorsements for the year. So Manuel has earned the most so far this year from his endorsements. And that is pretty unsurprisingly Roger Federer. Um, he's made so far this year 58 million from his sponsors. And so that's come from 10, so he's got 10 individual sponsors, and that's an average of 5.8 million per sponsor. Why that's important, I'll explain towards the end. Um, now, second is the men's number two, Novak Djokovic, who's earned 31 million from his sponsors, at an average of, sorry, 31 million from his sponsors, he's got six sponsors, and then, so that means it comes at an average of 5.17 million per sponsor. Now, the third, um, and finally, the men that I'm going to talk about is Rafael Nadal. 
He's earned 28 million in sponsors, and he's got five sponsors, and that's an average of 5.6 million per sponsor. Now, that the average you think would be amazing sponsor choice because people like Federer are going to have a lot more. So, people like Federer, who are well renownedly known as is renowned as one of the most successful tennis players in our generation, is going to be having a lot more sponsors. So it's going to have a lot of sponsors, obviously. However, so obviously he's going to have the 10 compared to Louis Chapeau over six. Now, when it comes into, um, so when it comes into effect, the fact that he has the average, is when you look at Maria Chapeau, she's earned 23 million from her sponsors. She's got six sponsors. However, that's only at an average, so with six sponsors, 23 million, that's an average of three point, sorry, 3.8 million per sponsor. That's a whole two million less than, uh, two million less per sponsor than um, Roger Federer. Obviously that's how much sponsor wins pay, but it's still a big gulf in between the two. Next we're gonna look at Serena Williams, who is on 13 million from her sponsors. She's got four sponsors, which rounds to an average of 3.25 million per sponsor. That's how much she's being paid. And then finally we've got Carla Wojnowski. She's got 11 million in sponsors, and she's got nine sponsors, the second highest out of everyone and the highest out of them. However, that only that only equals a total of 1.38 million per sponsor, an average of 1.38 million per sponsor, which is a very worrying trend when you compare the two. So you look at Roger Federer, 5.8 million average per sponsor. He's got 10 sponsors. Now that Djokovic, 5.167 million. He's earning on average from six sponsors. That's on and out, 5.6 million from five sponsors on average. And then the women, 3.8 million per sponsor for Maria Sharapova, who is the highest in women and doesn't come close to competing with any of the averages of the men. Now, these figures represent an extremely worrying um, trend for females in tennis as it shows that male tennis, male athletes are still being promoted more than females by sponsors and in turn by the media because the sponsors aren't going to promote the money to the athletes if they're not going to be constantly appearing in the media. So Roger Federer, household net, always going to be in the media. However, shouldn't Maria Sharapova or Sri Williams constantly be in the media? Which they are, so why aren't they being paid as much? In fact, talking about all this, advantage for men, the sex pay gap in professional tennis um, Article states that the unequal pay is that men garner more revenue because their competitions command higher attendance and television ratings. They also state, though, that one popular rationalisation is that men deserve higher pay because they work more. Now, they said this, but before finishing the article, they they come back and say, while that is true of Grand Slam events, men play best of three sets at most other tournaments on the professional tour. So, apart from the Grand Slam uh, events. Men aren't actually playing, playing more than the women. So it's one of those, it's a problem that really does need to be, um, it's a problem that whilst we can argue that men play more in the overall, in the Grand Slams, it's one of those things that we can fix very easily by changing up the structure, by moving things around. And the fact is, there's, it's almost impossible to have the argument that women don't deserve as much pay because they play less. Because apart from Grand Slams, they play the same amount as men. And the only reason why they're not playing more in the Grand Slams is because it's structurally inappropriate, which is a very big cop-out if we are saying, if we were to take money away from them and say, because you don't play as much, we're not gonna pay you as much. Because they're playing, they should be playing the same amount. The only reason they're not is due to structural issues. And if they were going to do that, you'd have to make it, one year would be the women playing five sets, the next would be the men playing five sets, and vice versa. And then that one year, the men would be playing, paid as much, the next, the women would be paid less. So thank you very much for watching.